hopefully all taken care of and we should be going live here on Facebook in just a little bit. If you're just tuning in, let me make certain my audio is down to where it needs to be. Uh, as of right now, again, we don't want to bury the lead, so we're going to go right smack into everything. Uh, I'm Again, if you're just tuning in, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. This is Weather Overtime. Uh, this is our online video weather blog giving you an idea as to what's going on uh, with the weather across the area. And the main thing we want to look at at this point is going to be first of two storm systems coming on through. The first one is going to be giving us tomorrow's threat of severe weather. Add to that, there is also going to be the possibility. Let me just check my volume real quick here. Okay, there we go. Good to go on Facebook. Got to check these things, unfortunately. We're looking at the severe weather possibilities, mainly back to our west. We're seeing, again, a, an enhanced threat for severe weather across the mid-south, down toward Jackson, Mississippi, west of Birmingham, Alabama. And that, again, is going to be the main threat for most of tomorrow. But we are still seeing here a lesser threat, but still possible slight risk for most of the area uh, back around Dalton and all the way over to Athens, Sweetwater in that area. That is where we may see again the potential, a lesser potential in the uh, marginal threat, the green polygon showing a lesser potential, higher potential here, lower potential here, but more importantly, still a potential for parts of the News 12 viewing area. So if you're in the area tomorrow, late morning, early afternoon, that is where we will see the best potential for severe weather coming on through. And that could be, again, a bit of an issue. That is just one issue to take a look at. Apologize for the foreshortedness of this uh, weather overtime, but unfortunately, uh, Andrew Harrison was in here a little while ago. We have to record some stuff that happens on, thir on the rest of Thursday, Friday, and into the weekend. So we may not feature all of our stuff for the rest of the uh, period that we usually feature on here. Very close to, again, 60s for today. Close to normal on the low temperature, but well above normal on the regular air temperatures out there. Record high of 78, last set back in 1949. Record low of minus 7, last set in 1886. Now, whether or not we get close to that in the next couple of days, that's going to be a little bit on the iffy side. We do not have anything really happening right now. A few high, thin clouds drifting on through for the rest of Thursday evening into Friday morning. We may see the potential of some more problems coming on through with our latest storm system. The first one, the one from the last couple of days, it's all the way up over southeastern Canada, the Canadian Maritimes, and not a threat for us. Our next storm system coming in as we go into tomorrow is sitting over parts of the Red River Valley. This one's starting to spin up some rain over Oklahoma, green country getting some rain tonight, and across much of the natural states, seeing some of that going on through. Some more showers developing over Louisiana and parts of Texas. That is going to be heading our direction into the rest of tonight and early on Friday. Now, as we go into the next several days, we see again the potential for uh, more potential of colder air coming through, and that's from this system over the Pacific. That's going to be heading our through as we get into Sunday night and Monday, and that could bring in the potential of maybe some snow showers out there. Let's take storm system number one first. This system moves in tomorrow morning. Starting early in the morning, more showers coming on through. And then the best potential of heavy weather will be late Friday morning into early Friday afternoon as that whole system crosses the area. Now, once we get rid of that system, another weaker system moves in from the west. That one will fall apart. We'll see some colder temperatures and some clearing skies. Call it a cloud-sun mixture for most of Saturday, but high temperatures won't go much higher than the mid-40s. We get into Sunday morning, temperatures in the upper 20s for lows, and then uh, some sunshine replaced by clouds late on Sunday into very early on Monday. And that's where the chances of snow showers start showing up. Now, with that first system, the one that's coming through tomorrow, let's go ahead and document what's going on with the wind gust potential because the best potential of wind starting off will be 
not tomorrow morning, but they will be noticeable. Getting going in the morning right before dawn patrol, winds start picking up to near about 40 miles per hour. Then watch these numbers as we go toward midday on Friday. Lot of readings topping 60 miles per hour. Yes, there is some leeway out there when it comes to uh, the over under of the wind speeds, but this is a good indication of what we may be looking at by noon tomorrow. Now, most of what we're seeing again for right now is going to be again about midday and just afterwards as the system moves through the winds switch from the southeast back to the west but take a look at some of these numbers here high 50s to high 60 mile per hour range and that's going to be heading on down the line toward knoxville and asheville into the rest of the afternoon rush hour choppy winds 30 40 miles per hour and then it looks like things don't calm down i don't want to use that terminology by early saturday morning it'll be less windy shall we say and then we will get a fairly choppy early weekend with lots of breeze starting off on Saturday. But it won't be quite as windy as what Friday is looking at. Now, to that end, the National Weather Service has issued again a wind advisory in effect for the darker blue shaded counties in northeast Alabama, southeast Tennessee, much of western areas of west of north carolina and then back into northern georgia that's for winds of around 40 to 55 miles per hour the national weather service in peachtree city georgia did not issue a high wind warning last time around but they are issuing one for the northern tier of counties in georgia winds here their estimate is going to be around 55 miles per hour plus National Weather Service Morristown from the Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia State Tri-Area Line all the way up along the Appalachians. That is where we are going to see winds of possibly 80 miles per hour plus going into Friday morning. And that wind, high wind warning continues until Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Yes, it could be canceled early we do see again the potential problems with a lot of wind gusts out there maybe causing problems for high profile vehicles so that is something we could watch uh, out across the area file this again under a decent mountain wind wave event or a mountain wave event as it's called this is what we're going to be seeing uh, potential of the danger is going to be there this is not hyping the weather the potential of some dangerous traveling conditions will be coming up so at the very least i would say keep a firm hand on the steering wheel pay attention to what's going on in front of you especially with those 18 wheelers anything else out there that can catch the winds and wobble around the roadways or tip over it's possible in these conditions so something to watch out for as we go into the rest of friday winds going into next week look to be choppy but not entirely terrible so let's concentrate again for the first part storm system number one leaves the area going up to the northeast then we get into monday morning this scenario here depends on how much moisture there is coming in and how much cold air undercuts all of that put that together and we could see some snow potential here, but most of it going along I-40 and areas right along that through Middle Tennessee up into Kentucky and West Virginia, and some back to the west of the Mid-South with a lot more problems between Little Rock and Shreveport. Could be the potential of maybe some mixture of precipitation there taking place in parts of the area down toward the Delta. Now getting closer to about Monday afternoon, we may see bright and early. Uh, temperatures early in the afternoon might make their way to the mid 30s, maybe the upper 30s. Then that cold air starts to arrive behind that front and temperatures will have started their trek downwards as we go into Monday evening. Now, yes, normally the temperatures fall off after the sun goes down, but it looks like we may be looking at not only the potential of some very chilly numbers at first on Tuesday. And we may not recoup much more than this by Tuesday morning. We also see the potential of some mixture of different types of precipitation. Again, this depends on how much moisture is up there 
and how much cold air moves in. And with these temperatures, it's a very good bet that some of that moisture will make its way through that lower level of colder air and all the way to the surface. Now again, this far out, six days, five days out, the winter weather forecast models don't do that good with it. I would say keep an eye on this over the weekend so that by Saturday and Sunday, you're being able to see a little bit more about what the actual percentage of precipitation is and who's going to be affected and where coming on through. Because notice by rush hour Tuesday morning, some of that stuff, the temperatures will be perfect. There might be enough moisture here to cause problems on the roadway. So next Tuesday morning, that could be a potential problem for travelers. And that is something that we're really going to have to pay attention to. But that storm system number two coming up as we go into the early part of next week. For the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, the first thing I would do would be, if you're going to be doing any volunteering outdoors, would be to plan ahead for a cold, blustery day with some moisture coming in. So far, it looks like most of the moisture will hold off until Monday evening. So hopefully the day on for service instead of just another day off will be giving us the potential of some precipitation to our west, moving our way early. But if you have any plans to volunteer for MLK Junior Day, I would advise dressing warm, having some protection against rain or snow if it comes in with that, gloves, layered clothing, and again, uh, for group activities, make certain that if everybody's out there and they're not wearing the proper amount of clothing, if they start getting shivers, get them indoors, get them into a warm vehicle, bring them off their duties for a little bit. Please watch what is going on for, the, the, uh, for everybody's safety's sake. That's something that we learned in Scouts a long time ago. So now with this coming in on Monday into Tuesday, that's where we could see our next winter precipitation event. Now, how much are we looking for? Through about uh, this first storm system, Friday, maybe the potential, if it gets cold enough, if it gets cold enough, of some higher elevation snow, and even then, way less than an inch. Now, going into around Monday morning, better potential back to the west of us. And then as we go toward Monday night into Tuesday, yes, we are seeing a lot more precipitation here than what we've seen for a while but once again long range snow does a lot worse than short range snow models we're also seeing a couple of interesting things here number one we don't have as much snowfall as predicted about 24 hours ago so the computer models are taking us from two to four inches to one to two inches and that's about a 50 percent drop right there secondly the highest amount of precipitation is going back to our north this looks to be focusing on i-40 from little rock fort smith through about the area of the mid-south middle tennessee and then back across the cumberland plateau we're naturally going up slope there's going to be a lot more colder air and the moisture will have a better chance of forming and sticking so little rock memphis nashville back through the plateau all the way back up to the virginias that is where we're going to be seeing the potential of some of that heavier amounts of snowfall and hopefully that band continues to kind of make its way back to the north because if it does that'll take care of the moisture for us moving it up that direction and again seeing changes like this this isn't weather models trying to hoodwink you or bring you uh, misinformation this is the way computer models work they change 6 12 18 24 hours they will change what they see after running the numbers and this is what we get and for now the information is looking better not great but still possible that we're getting less potential of precipitation here and more around i-40 corridor middle tennessee northern northeastern tennessee eastern kentucky west tennessee northwest mississippi and eastern and central arkansas that appears to be the pro the situation for now as the time we record this at about 11 o'clock thursday evening all of these numbers will change as we go into the next couple of days so i really highly recommend keeping track of this by staying tuned uh, to news 12. For tonight, uh, thanking News 12 morning anchor Brad Gisa for a great sunset from the Chickamauga battlefield. Some 
amazing colors bracketed by some of the, the trees out on the line there. If you've got pictures, please send them in to us. We could use them. We're running a little low. So give them a, give us a buzz at weather, pardon me, at pictures at WDEF.com or drop them to our social media pages. Your snapshot could be the next Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. And we'd love to see what you're seeing out there. So please send those in to us. Our Greater Chattanooga Orthodontics bus stop forecast showers in the morning, decently chilly and then warm, very windy into tomorrow afternoon around dismissal time. There are a bunch of schools that have either postponed start time or have an early finish or have canceled classes altogether for Friday. Tune in tonight on News 12 at 11 and tune in for the morning show starting at 5 a.m. Chip Chapman will have an update on the weather and who's got school and who doesn't. Check out what's happening. Our ticker will be running at the bottom of the screen with more information. So if you want to see what's happening out there before you go to school and have to turn back around because school has been canceled, keep it tuned to News 12 and we'll keep you updated on what's coming our way. Quick check of the seven day forecast again into the next few days. Rain, thunder, wind for Friday. The weekend looks dry and chilly. And then that next storm system arrives on Monday for the holiday. Better chances of precipitation into the nighttime hours and around Tuesday. And then some of the coldest air of the season. That actually right there is one of the very uh, conservative models at this point to show 12 degrees for a low on Wednesday. There are a lot of computer models that are taking us well into the single digits for a lot of areas, including specifically north and northwest of Chattanooga. So if you're around those areas, be prepared for a very cold start to next Wednesday. Dangerously cold, in fact, in some areas. That'll do it for now. We're going to have to wind things up because we're coming close to our news at 11. So I'm going to have to uh, uh, wrap things up here in just a little bit to let you know a little bit more about what's going on uh, for everybody on the newscast. And we got a lot to talk about for tonight. So news 12 at 11, news at 5 tomorrow morning on the morning show. Uh, on Facebook, in the comments section, Carlos Yates, thanks for joining us from Memphis. Jeff Peterson here uh, checking in. Yes, it's going to be interesting to see what the Chiefs game is like. Not uh, the worst weather I've ever been at at Arrowhead Stadium, but we'll see what exactly that looks like uh, going into the course of the next couple of days. Andrew Harrison wow. making a guest appearance back there uh, in the background. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned to News 12 for more updates on air and online. Please let's be careful out there and we'll have details again on our website and on our ticker. So stay tuned for more with News 12 throughout the next few days as our next series of storm systems rolls on through. Thanks for joining us for Thursday evening.